But of course, United finally in control of the hill. They're All right, we'll do what we can to get you live updates. We're going to start our coverage for Initiative's Invasion of Fort Knox, we'll call it. Uh, this is an uh, ongoing fight. I'll give you some characteristics of fight. We'll be changing our uh, imagery and updating the statistics and stuff like that. It's hard to get a visual camera in there, and even if you were in there, it would be hard to follow around, uh, along where the action is. Because the action right now is not in the usual places. It's not at the keep stars, not at the structure. That's good. In about an hour, uh, the fights right now are happening around holes. Remember, this fight is all about hole control. And that's what's going on now. So I'll get you updated on that. The big thing to look at, their scoreboard here is going to be pods. And you want to... You want to make sure that your team is losing less pods, basically getting pilots killed and thrown out of the wormhole than the other team, because uh, at a certain point, that's how you win uh, these fights, is you basically pod out your opponents. So it's going to be very interesting. Highly skilled wormhole pilots trying to get in. Uh, the initiative and friends having a lot of pilots already in. It's going to be interesting to see how this shapes up. Like I said, we're going to have statistics. I'll be putting them up uh, as soon as we can. We're looking at battle reports right now to see who's killing who. The best reports right now are that wormholers tried to come in through wormhole. They've been trying to get a fleet in for a while now. They successfully did get some pilots in. I think a lot of AHACs earlier today. That was mostly laser hawks, which are an ally to hard knocks. Uh, this is a second attempt to get even more pilots in. The wormhole community... Uh, and I don't mean that as a one big community conglomerate that all thinks the same way. There are different groups in this thing. Uh, a few of them, um, at least several of them are trying to get in. They actually got bombed by the Stuka bombers from initiative and destroyed at least half of them did, the ones that were trying to get into the hole. The ones that actually made it into the hole. The ones that never made it in didn't get bombed. So uh, we are also looking again at um, the timers on the deep stars. Those are ticking down. They'll be up in about an hour. This is the armor timer. That's the second round. That means if, if they can't really break in, uh, and I'm talking about Hard Knocks and their team, the defenders, if they can't break in and get reinforcements right now, they're not going to have what they need to defend those structures because uh, they really need to uh, do sub-capital sub fighting 
to lower the DPS on those things to let the timer uh, tick down and then uh, for it to go back into an invulnerable state. So they need people in here. They try to get people in and they've been denied this first uh, attempt here. Okay, so I'm gonna get up for a second, try to get you more facts. We have a lot of information coming in. We're also going to try to get some FCs in here to give us updates on what's going on in the field. You can imagine they're busy. This is not the kind of fight that you can walk away from or even look away from. Uh, things happen really fast, very important things. So it'll be uh, a challenge to try to get somebody in here to tell us what's going on. But we're hoping to get uh, someone like Sister Bliss uh, when they have a little bit of a break. He is the leader of the initiative. Um, we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Okay. Uh, again, yeah. I'm trying to get a camera in there, but it is very difficult. Uh, the again, the timers are not yet uh, ticking down. Uh, they're both at one hundred because the assault has not started right now. It's all about worm wormhole control. Uh, and the attackers who are invading this place initiative have 100% control over the holes at the moment. A picture of a something of the fight that happened earlier. Really, this is really happening fast. Okay, things seem to be calm right now at this very moment. It'll heat up again in less than an hour. We decided to come on early because a lot of the action is actually happening right now, or just happened about a half hour ago. And imagine very important fight happened. And the way I think it went down by different reports that came to me were um, the wormholers were trying to get in. I imagine there was over a hundred of them. They finally breached one of the holes and were pouring in and uh, they were not tackled very well. So uh, things were getting out of hand. Uh, Sister Bliss was commanding a Stucca fleet which bombed. Uh, the bombs landed, hit their targets and wiped out pretty much all the people that had come in at that time. Shortly after that, Snuff and Tissue and the Imperium arrived to try to help out, but the situation is under control at that time. That's the fragments of information that have come to put together. It's a little bit inaccurate, but we'll clear that up. Can if you need it. <laughs> you just need filler. No, I mean if you guys have some information, I have Lieutenant Condor with me. He is from Initiative, actually inside the wormhole. I have Orion Sa Solo. You are a Tri from Triumvirate. We have Titalis. Not anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, you just moved to PL, right? Yeah, we just. Sorry. Yeah, we just went to PL. Is, is that a secret? <laughs> No, no, it's uh, open now. We've been in for about a week now. All right, we have also with us from, um, what's the name of your corporation? Stern Grenadier. Stern Grenadier. I want to talk about your corporation in a second. We have Titalis Warden. Titalis Warden. Uh, Stun, uh, hey. Hello. Stun, what's it called again? Stern Grenadier? 
Storm Grenadier. Storm Grenadier. You guys just joined too. You guys were actually Mercenary Coalition and now are Black Legion. Oh, he joined oh, Black he... Legion. Yeah, we decided to jump in with uh, with Illo and the gang here for a bit and see if they are a decent fit for. Wild. Good luck there. Um, did you guys have? You guys are actually moved down to Delve right now, right? Uh, I think there's enough kill kill reports now that we can say that we might be around that area. Might be around that area. I'll say you are around that area. Um, can you talk about intentions of Black Legion on the borders of Delve? Well, obviously we're going to take over Delve. I mean, you know, that's how that's going to work. Taking a a mining vacation of some sort. Hey, man, everywhere that Black Legion goes, fun follows. So you know, that's the whole point is to find some fun. If today we're finding fun out there, next week we're finding it somewhere else, then so be it. And if there's other objectives, I am unaware of them. Blissfully. I imagine uh, Aquarius is like Acapulco for miners. Just kidding. So uh, you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Uh so I'm not sure what they're thinking. Some of the miners out there, I mean, they, they're they obviously very familiar with the uh, umbrella. The umbrella saves the day. And when it doesn't save the day, those guys die a horrible, horrible death. And uh, it's not unique to anywhere else in New Eden. It's just in, in goon space and initiative space and in test space to some extent as well. If you, um, there's almost an expectation that the guys have your back. Uh, from what I understand, as long as you speak the correct language and communicate it effectively, you get into some areas of space and uh, it's, it's a little less uh, organized than that. And if you get caught, you're pretty well expected. But uh, yeah, the guys out there, uh, they, they they definitely have their counters figured out, man. They, it, the miners are definitely satisfied. It, it's It shows in the economic reports each month and it shows every time I, I drop on one of those guys and there's a 50-50 shot, we end up dying as much as they Yeah. All right, let's get you um, guys situated. We're in a public channel for Talking in Stations Discord. If you want to come and hang out and talk with us, you're welcome to join us. Um, we are reporting right now on the initiative and the Fort Knox attack, which is happening. We're about to see the second timer on Keep Stars in there. There are two of them. One is called Fort Knox. That was the very first Keepstar ever built. It came a few days after the publication of the Blueprints entered the game. Uh, Mujahideen, I believe, was the architect. And uh, he was a former Black Legioner, uh, but then joined Hard Knocks. And he had prepared everything and spent a lot of time preparing for the arrival of the Blueprint. When it arrived, they were one of the first ones to buy one. I believe those things were super expensive, $700 billion. For the blueprint they bought it and built it just about as fast as you could build a keep star and that was i believe i don't know how many days it was but it was days it was not weeks and that keep star is fort knox and that's the one that's in danger today As you noted, those blueprints are pretty darn expensive. Uh, early on, you can only count on you know, two uh, two hands the, the number of people that actually afforded that thing early on. And uh, the first couple of copies that came out were real rough to work, if you could find one. I'm, I'm not sure that's true entirely. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of more isk and eve than folks think right now. But oh, fair enough. People know it came out there like. You look at the MERs, you can tell the ISK is just going out of control with the, the Rorks and the mining and whatnot, and especially in the force of Dell. Yeah, I'd be kind of surprised if there was more than, even now, if there's more than maybe 40 or 50 Keepstar blueprints in the game that are actually. Re Doesn't seem like a high demand item. Uh, even investors, I mean, our group thought about investing in one. And we just couldn't justify the cost. We we couldn't think of enough people that would be interested in buying them that that wouldn't already have the capabilities of a. What, what, what was your return on investment? How long would it take you to pay off the blueprint? 
we couldn't even calculate it accurately. With 700 billion is blueprint, even if we were making you know, 20, 30 billion isk early on on the blueprint copies, which people were making more than that for a little while, but uh, it was still quite the uh, the undertaking. And we didn't know enough buyers, but we knew plenty of people who were going to be suppliers and plenty in a keep star scale is three or four. If I knew three or four people who were willing to invest in it, then, then Orion was probably a little closer to correct. There was probably more than a, a dozen or so. There's probably closer to two dozen. You gotta think. I mean, there's just people who who had reserves of Plex. I think. Uh, oh, what's his name? Has a uh, Scott Manley. He talked about having. He had Plex that he would never ever have to worry about as ISK again. That's some. That's a a lot of wealth you're talking about right there. It is, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I'd I'd be interested in seeing if uh, CCP would ever be willing to uh, release the number of. Uh, copies that are originals that are out it's been a couple of years now and i bet so, there, there, check, let me know I how, see how there'd be more than maybe 50 of them uh even the ones that are out now are more than sufficient to supply pretty much anyone i've ever spoken with they they're everybody i know is aware of who they need to contact if they need to get a copy and the copies don't cost that much the return on investment would be ridiculous at this point can you guys tell me what's um What's in this keep star? How much wealth are we talking about? What's at stake for Fort Knox or Hard Knox? So, so I, I'd gladly speak on that for a moment. Uh, in terms of total wealth, I don't know the number of individuals, so I can't speak to that. But uh, losing a structure in a wormhole is an all or nothing proposition. And I bet Orion can. Well, it depends on how much stockpiling there is and how many people have been gone from the game. I mean, you could, since this stuff is most likely going to drop when it dies, if those folks don't get that stuff out of there, uh, this could be, you know, this will be the largest drop of uh, isk wise of stuff out of any citadel that's died in wormhole space if it dies. We're talking yeah, and, magnitudes of trillions, probably easily. And it's certainly the most predictable drop that will have ever occurred. I, what do you mean by predictable drop? So um, you do a gank or something, and there's a certain amount of risk involved. There's a certain amount of uh, uncertainty. Will you even find a target today? I mean, you look at the kill reports on a day by day basis. You see a couple of jump freighters die, a couple of uh, DSTs or blockade runners die, a few structures in low sec die or, or null sec, or even in high sec occasionally. But uh, there isn't the guaranteed drop on a lot of those things. And things that do drop, tend to be um, the the ISK quantities are managed uh, either by the total amount of M3 that even fits in the uh, object we're talking about or the risk assessment associated with it. So you don't ship 200 billion ISK worth of stuff in a jump freighter. I mean, you just don't do it, especially if you're going to JITA. But a structure like a Keepstar, you keep 50 billion ISK worth of stuff in it because the likelihood one dies, one dies maybe a month. And you can fit an infinite number of M3 in the structure. To your question there, I think I think the estimate is a low trillion, low ball number. But the thing you also have to remember is there is another keep star in system, so majority of people are probably going to evac their stuff into the other keep star. Um, it'll be the people that don't have that ability to evac it that we're going to see get ejected. But we know there's faction dreads, AT ships. Someone there was a rumor that there was a faction dread that was worth several close to 100 billion ES. I don't know whether that's true or not. I can guarantee you there's going to be some very high end items hanging out in there. It's just a matter of if this keep star dies. Then. We heard there's some uh, tournament ships in there. From former tournament players that might have played for PL or other groups. Anyone have uh, any information on that? I don't know, uh, but that sounds very logical. Well, I mean, just just look at just look at their their kill board. Every now and again, you'll see like an imp was lost by a hard knock guy in some place of space where it's evidently they came through a worm. Right. 
I, I was thinking that, you know, they called it Fort Knox for a reason. Like if you're, if you're a member of Hard Knox, which is a pretty elite group, right? They've been in other places. Um, they have a ton of wealth because they've worked up to it. They're some of the best uh, players in the game. And you have all these assets. Of course, you're going to put them in Fort Knox because this is a wormhole where super capitals cannot be used at all, period, end of story. And you have a keep star, which normally takes a super capital fleet to take it down. Uh, unless you have thousands of people fighting it, which you can't get into a wormhole normally. So this is one of the safest places in all of New Eden for your assets, as far as a player-owned uh, situation. And yet here it is under attack. I think everyone, and especially in EVE in general, for the most part, thought that Hard knocks and their wormhole there uh, was unassailable. Like it was one of those things that it just it wasn't going to happen until someone actually put the the effort into doing it. And that's what it boiled down to. And initiative doesn't surprise me. Initiative uh, were the ones to do it because you know they're fairly innovative in some of the things they do. I mean, by the way, I'm here now. Uh, oh. one second, let me check. Who is, oh, Donovan from Initiative. How are you doing? Diplomat, right? Correct. How's it going? What's going on in there? Uh, so, I mean, just to kind of touch base on what he just said, that's the thing with, like, wormhole space. It's never been tested. This is the first time this has happened. The only thing that's ever invaded wormhole space at some kind of scale was a bunch of loosely organized Russians. So, this is the first time you've seen an actual test of wormholes supposed strength and expertise and so far they're getting swamped um what is do you have any idea how many people are actually in there on either side um exact numbers i mean it's kind of unclear because of local i mean you know you can't really count how many are there but i mean at the beginning you could you see we formed quite a bit I mean, everybody knows Goon's potential to form. Um, on the wormholer side, of course, they don't have the numbers we have. They just have a bunch of blingy ships that they think are going to win them or win it. Yeah. Um, I'm tracking down some information. Maybe you know something about this. Um, that Horde was lining up a fleet to help Hard Knox. And um, they were waiting to get some kind of entry uh, in, and, and uh, we're going to produce numbers that could equal yours. Yeah, but it looks like they might have stepped, they might have actually stopped the fleet. Uh, it doesn't look like Horde is prepared to go in to help Hard Knocks anymore. They might have stood down, they call it. I mean, they just tried one big attempt, if you've seen that battle report that's been passed around. Yeah. That epically fell. And then we're also talking about Pandemic Horde, which lately the max they fit, or the max they come up with is like 30 caracals and like 30 carriers. So I don't think they were ever going to match what we have. Um, did you say what you did have in there? Are you uh, uh, How many people do you actually have in there? I said, I can't go into specifics, but I mean, it's common knowledge now that we formed like two full, like this is, this is in its way of flexing its muscles. Like this is us showing what mm -hmm. we can do. Can you tell and, us, uh, go ahead. I was saying usually, and it's known for its quality and not for its quantity of pilots, but now we're showing that we can also produce the quantity plus the quality without sacrificing that quality. Yeah. So this is in its show of strength. How did this plot get hatched? Why are you doing this? Is it just because uh, it can be done? Is this a mountain to climb because it's there? I mean, that's what an initiative does. Like, we always try to do the impossible with little numbers little hope from the other side to show we can do it like we have some of the best fcs in the game the best pilots in the game and then we have also the best allies in the game so 
-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's what the U.S. does with its naval forces. It goes around the world and flexes its muscles. Um, so interestingly, there's a backstory to this whole fight uh, that there were... It gets kind of complicated. I'm not sure yet. I've I've gotten all the information, but there were definitely wormhole groups involved. Not groups, group. Um, there was a group that was um, in. There was a group called Tempest Legion, and uh, Tempest Legion was helping this other wormhole group defend itself when Hard Knocks. I'm sorry. It was yeah, it was helping a group defend itself. So this Tempest Legion is helping a group defend itself. Hard Knox attacks Tempest Legion's uh, home because they left it unlocked, and put a lot of pressure on them. And they had to return back home to defend their own territory. And in the process, uh, they abandoned their allies. Well, this caused rifts inside of Tempest Legion. Tempest Legion starts to fall apart. Um, and there's a lot of resentment towards Hard Knocks. And this is maybe one example of many where Hard Knocks has influenced um, something inside of wormhole space that have, has really ticked people off. Part of that group, um, this is where it gets confusing, so I'll try to sort it out before I put, actually write this up, because I'm probably going to write this one out. This is pretty amazing. Um, part of that group is the one that... Um, joined uh pause party and and then quit right before they helped initiative get into rage so they helped escort them in uh and those guys had had contact with initiative for some time before so this is months before and this is basically months in the planning and then uh, they're the ones that helped execute that plan now uh this has nothing to do with Pause Party. It has to do with these guys that were in Pause Party after they were in Tempest Legion, and now they're um, a different group. I don't know their names, but they're the ones that helped Initiative get in here. And it's a revenge plot against Hard Knocks, who they have a lot of uh, anger towards. Can you comment on that? I can't. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, I will I, I'll iron out those details though and write it up uh, so we can get to the bottom of how this happened because this is extraordinary this kind of uh, high level Eve gameplay it's not very usual. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. Like, I mean, of course, you know, details and stuff will come out after all this is said and done and the best. I mean, right now, the biggest thing is just the amazing feat that has already been accomplished. Like. I mean, I like your Aztec reference that I think you made earlier. Uh-huh. Mesoamerica, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, that was pretty good. Like, I mean, and it's pretty accurate. Like, you have a bunch of angry savages in a wormhole with well, a bunch of shiny crap. Uh, uh, there were civilizations. I wouldn't call them savages. <laughs> I mean, we're the Spaniards, right? So. Oh, the Spaniards might have been savages, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but... We're the ones coming in to basically take that shiny gold and liberate these oppressed people. But no, I mean, it's it's interesting at least. It's a great thing to be a part of for, I think, everybody that's playing the game right now. Yeah. You're pretty confident you're going to do this, right? I mean, yeah, we're going to do it. I mean, we're here, so. I mean, if you look so far, like, that wonderful surf fleet that tried to come in in that battle report and just massacred. Like that's the, that's the biggest thing is I love like Bushido unity wormhole eliteness that we're basically crushing from day one. Oh, wow. This is so uh, you're really uh, slapping their face with your gauntlet uh, because this the, wormholers are not somebody that you typically like, are they? I mean, I don't, I don't dislike, say I dislike them. It's, yeah. The ego is pretty, pretty, pretty fat. Yeah. And I mean, if you're going to go, you know, flex, I guess you're going to go against somebody that names their Keepstar Fortnite. 
Well, Fort Knox, uh, like I said, is probably supposed to be one of the safest places in all of uh, EVE Online. Maybe Imperium would disagree because they have uh, a pacified empire in Delve, but uh, this this just technically was going to be a place that was very difficult to invade um, because you can't get the you can't usually get the numbers in here. You can't uh, if you can get the numbers in there. A lot of them their heart won't stay in it for three or four days that it takes to do all this because you have to be vigilant through those three or four days. You can't just uh, come back when when the timer's up. You have to have watch parties uh, and stuff like that to make sure that you hold uh, control over the place. And you can't use super capital, so it's really got to be a sub-capital fleet that takes down keep stars. Now, we've seen that demonstrated in the recent past, so we know it's possible. It's, it's happened a few times. So uh, this looks like it's um, the worst case scenario for any wormhole group. It's interesting. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Donovan. I uh, go ahead, Condor. I was just going to add on to that. I don't. I don't think it's like Donovan saying it's like we came here to try, and it's not so much. I think we're pretty. We're going to give it our best shot. That's the thing about initiative is we give it the best. I can recall back in 9 tac 4, the one reinforcement timer there for the keep star, it was 4 to 1 odds and our FCs were all pumped up to go even though it was 4 to 1 because they wanted to fight. And that's kind of the attitude we have. It's not trying to be so elite. It's just we want the challenge and we're going to take that challenge on. Yeah. So are there other goon fleets in there supporting? Well, we know there's uh, snuff in there. We know tissues in there. We know there is Imperium uh, pilots in there. We don't know how many. I'm sure they won't give numbers, but I mean, it's it's hardly a, a lone initiative uh, assault if there's more than just an initiative there. Well, the thing, the reason initiative can take credit for this is because they initiated it, pun intended. Um, this is definitely their plan. Uh, you could tell that the Imperium was, uh, I think, not even informed by the way they've reacted to it and how few people were there and how ready they were. So this is an initiative operation that other people are joining into. And I don't know if Snuff or Tissue were brought in after, before anything was initiated. But, you know... Do you um it was a question for you, Matt Earl. Do you have like do you have any idea like what what the numbers are if they're public that hard knocks has of real members? Um I am not an expert on hard knocks. The guys that I knew from hard knocks were the former leaders, uh new men I'd talked to for years. Um even before Hard Knocks was the big bad baddie that it is now. Um, uh, Mojadeen uh, was somebody I talked to, but that was, again, these guys are gone. Uh, the people who took over Hard Knocks, um, I, had to, I don't have any contact with them, nor do I know how strong their member base is. Uh, the only thing I've heard from them is they're a little more, they're a little edgier than they were before. Uh, and I think they were not as highly regarded uh, alliance-wise, like you, you know, you could work with them or that sort of thing. I might be wrong because they have a very strong relationship with Laser Hawks, who are uh, who actually are in there helping them defend themselves. Um, but Laser Hawks is another big, big group. Um, Hard Knocks is Hard Knocks and Laser Hawks kind of go together. There was a third group called Quantum Explosion, they're mostly Russian. And those guys were brutally good at at Eve, basically uh, PvP, and they're the ones that basically secured C six wormholes uh, for renting, and they started renting those out. And if you weren't paying them rent, you were going to get rolled out. So it was uh, a tough time. That was about three years ago. They they were also that group. Those three: Quantum Explosion, 
Hard Knocks, Laser Hawks. Those were the guys that took out um, Braves wormhole group called Drop Bears, I think. And they were the ones that were holding the last C6 wormhole. Uh, and they got ousted. So but I got to go, guys. Sorry I was so short, but... Thanks, man. Come back if you can. Right, we'll, talk, we'll talk to you later. I love Thanks. that live from the front uh, sound he's got going on. Yeah, total combat. <laughs> combat, right? Yeah. Good Good luck over there. Oh, here's another guy that might be in the wormhole. He just showed up. <laughs> um, hey, guys. I am in the wormhole. Brisk. Brisk. How you doing, man? I'm going to put your name down. We uh, we just saw a very large number of little bees come flying through uh, our wormhole. Oh yeah, we got reinforcements. Yeah, and we killed a lot of their reinforcements. So uh, this is looking kind of fun. I'm I'm, in, I'm kind of at the point where I I'm wondering if they're gonna really put up a big fight tonight or not. Um. If it's not the whole timer, I don't know how much they're going to put in there, especially after if they've lost whole control as badly as they have with some of those fights. I mean, they, right now, uh, we fought off a mixed HK Laser Hawks fleet about 20, 30 minutes ago. Uh, they're not used to Stukas. They're not used to the Bush bombers. Uh, and we wiped up pretty hefty. I want to say about 55 of those guys out pretty well and knocked them out of the, out of the wormhole. So um, some of their reinforcements are in trouble. I know they've got more guys in their keep star and we're, we're keeping an eye on that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think we're kind of at the point now where we're figuring 30, 40% chance that they're going to take this fight tonight. So we'll see. Well, if they needed to um, really put up a strong defense, the, the reinforcements that didn't make it in were essential. Uh, so we'll see we'll see what happens without that. That was a major fight that happened about an hour ago. Yep. And that, that, that was an interesting fight because we had they had Munas and Serbs, and we had our Ravens and uh, our Stuka bomber fleet, and they had they were basically chasing the Ravens as we were running around. They were able to kill a couple guys that, that got caught at the very tail of one of the bushes, uh, but we were having trouble breaking them at range. And then they swapped from the Ravens to try to hit the Stuka fleet, and they landed right in optimal range for the bombs, oh. uh, and the bombs just wiped them out. So it, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing to watch that. Oh, that was uh, was that uh, Sister Bliss? Is he the one that does the Stuka yeah. fleet? Bl Bliss Bliss was running that Stuka fleet, and then Pando ha is on the Raven fleet. So um, we've got pretty much everybody. Else. Yikes. Have you been uh have you been logged on this whole time? You were with us when this started. I have been here the whole time. I have not been in the chat. I just got in because we had a little bit of uh timing and I thought I'd come by. Oh great. Yeah, this is pretty exciting, huh? This is exciting stuff. It's very unusual. We were talking about that in Fleet, and it's it's one of those things where it's it's cool because we haven't done it before. I mean, it's not something any of us have ever done. So the fact that we were able to 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 get in here and we've really run these fleets twenty four hours a day. I mean, this has been solid. Like I went out, went to church, did some stuff, came back, was in a fleet, and it stayed up the whole time. Went out, got some dinner, came back, fleet still up. So I just this has been twenty four hours a day. It's pretty cool. We haven't done that before. Not Participation's good. I think so. And I think one of the things we're, I think we're realizing and everybody's starting to figure out is that this is more of a uh, um, of a marathon than a sprint. And it's going to be about who has the endurance to keep going. Because we're going to have to keep doing this through Wednesday. And we'll, I mean, we'll see. But uh, it's yeah, You're right. You have uh, armor timers that are coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, probably about a half hour. And then after that, do we know when the final timers will be? The the ones that will destroy these? if I, I believe uh, it's going to be Wednesday around 0200. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, 
be the day and time selected by the uh, defender. Month plus Correct. or minus a few hours. Right. I mean, I, and that we—that's what we're assuming. I, I, you know, I'm not uh, on the strategy team, so I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm sure we've hacked the keep star, and I'm sure we actually know the timing. But I think everybody's assuming it's going to be Wednesday. Yeah. Well, it's actually good if it's two. Uh, if it's 0200 Eve time, to put that in perspective, that's 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time on Monday. That's all U.S. time zone. Uh, that That's what the rumored exit time will be, but we don't know and won't know until, well, probably about an hour from now. Yeah, but the, the bulk of the strategy of that fight is going to be executed throughout the day. There's no way the... Right. If you're planning on a U.S. time zone primetime fight, you're planning like seven hours too late. Right. Tell us about that. Why is that? Because, <laughs> you know, like they're doing tonight, hold control is going to matter, and it's going to matter a lot. And uh, if they cannot figure out a way to get control of the holes long enough to get personnel and maybe some assets in if they need them, it's possible they don't need the assets. They need the body. Well, I, th I think at this point, uh, if goons are reinforcing as hard as we probably think they are, since uh, they have whole control, obviously, right now, at this point, it'll be just interceptors going in, reinforcing with numbers and hoping that HK has uh, ships for them to use inside the, the wormhole. Because if, if goons come, are coming in force like it looks like they are, there's no chance for uh, the smaller groups to be able to get whole control for very long, if at all. And that's essentially how it's been today. I mean, we have we've managed to control the whole for the vast majority of the time. Now that does not mean that they have not been good at getting their uh, you know slippery peats in. Um, they they've managed to get uh, dribs and drabs of guys in and in interceptors and and cloaky ships and and helioses and those types of things, um, but not a large fleet. And I know that when we when we when we killed the last fleet and what, it, what we talked about is it felt like it was kind of a desperation we got to get whole control uh we knew that they had a horde uh, horde reinforcements were on the way to that wormhole chain and we mm -hmm. kind of stopped that when we when we wiped that fleet so i mean I, they're trying to get as many bodies as in as they can just like we are um the difficulty is is that we caught them by surprise and have tried to maintain the control the entire time um that's been tough but so far so good we'll see how it goes yeah, it's working out in your favor. I actually was uh, worried because you guys are not wormhole experts, let's say. Uh, you guys are null sec. So how well do you do in this kind of warfare? Do your numbers translate the same here, or is it different? So far, it's been working out in your favor. Well, I, you know, as Pando has noted, and we, we said, I mean, this this has been in the works for a very, very long time. So a lot of guys have been working on this uh, around the clock lately, but the, the planning and the and the seating and the infrastructure and logistics has basically been going on for like almost a year, um, at least as, I, as far as I've been told. I've only known about it for a couple months. A um, couple months? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm on all the shows. They want to make sure I don't t say anything stupid if I figured anything out. Because we we started think, thinking, all right, something's going on. Because some of our, our our head logistics guys were like a wall, and that just is weird. Uh, and I think we finally figured out, okay, you know, something big is happening, and we had talked about it. Um, but in the end, you know, nobody thought it was this. There was a lot of speculation what we might be doing, but the, the last thing I think any of us thought was that we were going to go take the fight to HK in their home. Um, that just when, when we made the announcement, you could see, you, you could hear, you couldn't see, obviously, but you could hear, like, the stunned um, responses of folks uh, in, in comms. But it was all pretty positive after that. They got excited. Well, certainly leading up to this about, uh, I'd call it maybe a month and a half, two months ago, uh, initiatives, uh, fleets out in the drone lands in the surrounding area had picked up considerably. I'm sure at least some of the initiative guys were thinking, you know, maybe this is a prelude, get the guys kind of motivated to go out there, show them what kills can be made. Yeah. Uh, that was Titellus uh, Warden. And I, I'm trying to get some bubbles up here that show who's talking. I'll do my best. Uh, it wasn't, Discord wasn't cooperating earlier, but I'll see what I can do. But right now, you're hearing from uh, Briss Rubal, who is from the initiative. He's also in there in the uh, wormhole rage, as they call it. And you also hear from Titalis Warden, uh, who is from Black Legion now. 
And uh, earlier you were hearing from Orion Sasala, who is now PL, former triumvirate. I'll try to get wormhole people, but I, I, I think they're probably really busy trying to get <laughs> trying to get into this fight. I think you're going to be hard-pressed to find anybody who's a, a wormholer who isn't somehow on one side or the other. Yep. I like to say wormholers have day jobs, and that's uh, you know either low sec or null sec in addition to what they're doing in the wormhole. I think they're kind of upset, frankly. They, uh, I, I get the impression that they're not um, super thrilled to see null sec come in and uh, just kind of smug around, you know. That's the impression I get. Well, I mean, so that's probably why. It... <laughs> Sorry, that's probably why he was doing it earlier. Um, the diplomat from initiative. Yeah, I get the feeling we've wiped a bee's nest with these guys, but that's fun. I mean, look, I, and I've said this on, I said it on the meta show, I've said it on uh, our last live show. Um, we've got no grudge against HK or anything, as far as I know. I don't. Um, I love those guys. These guys fight, and they're really good at what they do, and we respect the hell out of them. And but hey, you know what? This is one of those impossible things that everybody's been saying. This, this can't be done. You can't kill Fort Knox. It's impossible. It's it's uh, unassailable. So we're trying to prove that wrong, and and uh, we'll see what happens. But so far, it's so so good. What do you think's in there? I mean, what do you what do you expect to get when it pops? If it pops. Well, I mean, it, that's a question. I don't know what they've managed to get out. I don't know what they've managed to move. Um, but you've got two plus years worth of stuff in there. Uh, you got players who aren't playing right now. You've got guys who've been banned. You've got guys who, um, you know, have, have have just left things there over time. And as anybody that plays Eve knows, I mean, if you're the, the older your player is, if you haven't made a concerted effort to pile all of your stuff in one place. You've got random crap lying everywhere. And mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that these uh, wormhole guys are the same way as we are. And having a place that's safe, that uh, is, you know, considered to be basically unattackable, you're going to put all your most precious stuff in there. So even if it's even if it's not, even if it's just a random junk or, or, or nothing or they manage to escape everything, you know, pull everything out, I think just the morale win there will be enough. But I think we're all hoping that, you know, we're going to smack this pinata and a lot of fun stuff's going to come out of it. Yeah, and Orion yeah. noted earlier, there is another keep star in there. So, you know, if they can trickle it over, that might work too. Well, right. yeah, it's going to take the destruction of both of them, won't it, to, to get the loot since everything will really transfer over to the second one. But these are both going down at the same time, it looks like, pretty much. Well, they also have the Satoyo in there, if I remember right. They've got probably dozens, if not, you know, a hundred other structures at this point. I'd, I'd have to double check. Can their gear They have a ton of structures in here. Yeah, there's a, a whole list, if I remember right, seen an overview before. It's just, it's a mile long in there. Well, no, that's an important point. So they can essentially transfer their stuff up until the last, uh, what, the last uh, structure they have up? Right. Wow. But I mean, hey, you know what? If you want to start moving moving those ships back and forth, we've had eyes on, on this Keepstar the entire time. So if they wanted to try to do that, it'll make it easier for us to see that. And we can probably try to catch some of the guys as they're doing it. Uh, I'm positive. I'm sure hundred percent positive that some of that stuff has been moved in mm -hmm. or moved around um, because we can't, when we're trying to focus on the whole control, we're not focused on making sure they're not moving stuff around. So uh, let's, let's get it clear that uh, it doesn't transfer around automatically according to noisy. Correct. Game. There's no asset safety in the world. There's no asset safety. Thank you. So it actually gets destroyed or purged into space when the structure goes down. Correct. Okay. So we're okay. Totally off track when we're saying that they can uh, move their stuff around through these structures. Basically, this no, they, is they they have to physically move stuff. They can't they can't just move it as a safety like we have in Nullsec or, or in other areas of of. Want to say put it put its perspective isk wise i was a fairly active player but a very low end isk maker so i didn't have a lot of isk and things but i still uh, before i moved from try to pl had around 12 billion isk wise worth of ships and mods in the keep star there so as an average person that plays uh and the isk wealth that some of these wormholes can get you can you can do the math on that and figure out there's probably quite a lot in those structures there 
Yeah, I mean, the, the one of the benefits of being in a C5 is, you know, the ish generation is pretty significant. I mean, I was seeing folks saying they can go out and in a in a PVE Nagelfar dread, I mean, they can they can farm like two billion isk an hour. So these guys have a lot of money. These guys have never been poor. I mean, fact the fact that HK two years ago was able to build the first Keepstar in Eve in a wormhole uh, where they're having to bring stuff in. I mean, that 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 take money. <laughs> it probably took them a trillion to build the thing, uh, let alone you know to get it set up and 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 all the stuff that might be inside it. So. What what takes us now 180 billion, a billion esque and, and and a half an hour uh, was a much bigger deal back then. So th these guys have money, no doubt. Well, and they called it Fort Knox for a reason. So uh, I'm sure they have stuff in there. Do you know anything about tournament Eve, like priceless Eve tournament ships being in there? I think we all assume that you know they've 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 done pretty well on the AT. So. I think we're all guessing that they have some AT ships and stuff in here. I and mean, this is where you would put that stuff. Uh, but at the same time, that's probably some of the easiest stuff to get out. And I know that we have had, mm, true. there have been instances where we have seen capital ships that they've been using to for hole control or trying to rage roll holes have gotten out. I know I saw a Phoenix get out. We don't know what, what possibly could have been in that Phoenix's ship maintenance bay. So I assume nothing, but... They could have they could have snuck some of that stuff out while we were trying. You never know. Interesting trade off, isn't it, to get your stuff out, but once you leave the hole, you got to get back in somehow. Uh, we may not see the expensive stuff leave until at at a point where they say this this is lost. We got oh, abandoned another. ship, pretty much. Th this is very interesting. This is one of the few places where it really means something to abandon ship. We're literally giving up. On defending something and all your things are on board you're not going to get it back it's it's really tragically tense it's uh the stakes couldn't be higher for these guys i, I think we're past that point though i mean once once they've been seated and whole controls taken you you're looking at some very very small windows of getting anything out and once anything big starts moving if you if you move anything more than one or two of those things you're gonna get caught eventually all right, guys, I'm going to bow out because I'm going to try to do a quick bio here. We're about to head back out, so uh, I'll try to come back on later. If I... All right, thanks. I mean, you say what you say, Ryan, but don't forget that if you have... This is Bard Ghost, like Isu from... Identify yourself first uh, if you're new. I'm Bard Ghost Isu from Bastion. I don't have too much experience with wormholes. I did a little bit, but I'm just going to note a few things here and there. With what you're saying, Ryan, you know, you can put the smaller stuff in an octa, cloak it when you log, well, take it out, cloak it, or log off, whatever you want to do. When it dies, well, when the keep star dies, you, you can just sit it there and wait till all is clear. You can get some of the stuff out that way. Like, it's not all going to be gone. They can get some of it out. They may have got stuff out already, and there is ways to get more. Maybe so, but I, maybe you're talking about high-end mods and stuff like that. And but I, I, the, that percentage is going to be very, very low. Oh, with the it will be the expensive have. stuff, right? It will be the expensive stuff you don't want to lose. All right, we have uh, again. This is the initiative invasion of Fort Knox. Uh, initiative has the Imperium. Uh, on their side, they also have snuff and they have uh, tissues in there as well. Um, and they're invading Rage, which is a C5 wormhole, home of Hard Knocks. That's the biggest wormhole group there is. Laser Hawks are in there too, trying to help Hard Knocks defend. And along with them are Pause Party and other wormhole groups like TSIDN, Scary Wormhole People. Um, I don't know how many of them are in there. These kinds of stats are not something that is. Uh, easy to get because they want to keep all that secret really there's a lot of surprises in wormhole space because there's a lot less information to work with for pilots so you can pre if the more information you have the better you can pre predict how to fight the fight when to use your people when to hold them back is a big part of these fights because once you get potted once you get destroyed 
uh, you are kicked out of the wormhole and you're out of the game. You have to sit on the sidelines unless your group controls uh, the ways into the fight. So uh, again, that's um, something that has been fought over and initiative has maintained hold control. So they're the ones with the entrances. If their guys get potted, they can actually bring them back in. Although I don't know if that's... a it might get a little tricky there, like when you do that and when you don't, because um, I, I don't know what the stakes are. Like if um, there's a certain amount of mass and maybe you want to hold everything at a critical so that only one person could come in and then it crashes, uh, then it's a race to scan down the other one. There's a lot of strategies to this type of uh, gameplay. Very different. What you see now is uh, an image of the two keep stars that are on screen. We're trying to get a um, video so that we can see what uh, the timers actually look like as they start to tick down. That is actually going to happen in about uh, 15 minutes, I believe. Somebody know what the timers are at now? Donovan's right here. Oh, is he? Uh, current keep star timer is 10 minutes and 20 seconds right now. The 10 minutes. When you click on the keep star, how many people does it say are in there? 110. Uh, do we think all of Hard Knocks are inside of uh, Keepstar? They are currently docked and either logged or currently docked. Yeah. Uh, 110, I don't know if that'll do it. They could put up a good no. fight if they catch you off guard, but uh, they're going to need more people. And they tried to get more people in about an hour ago. So, let's see. I think one of the interesting at least for me, the interesting thing about this fight is you have no way of knowing how many people are in system. You can see people, you can guess, but there's no local. I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's a completely different style. Uh, you're hearing from Lieutenant Condor. He's from Initiative. Yeah, Discord's having trouble... Um putting the bubbles up so we can see who's talking. So I'll, again, trying to work that out. Also trying to get you video of inside the system so these, we can watch these timers go in real time. We're working on that. Just about got it. All right. So yeah, basically the, the initiative just has to keep whole control for the for the duration of this uh this whole thing, and it could be uh pretty interesting for them. And really, on HK's allies to be really rage rolling to get back into the hole as things progress, because when they do actually engage in things and lose people, that's gonna be another round of trying to get as many folks back into the hole. Have you ever uh you haven't been in situations like these, have you? Uh, not in wormholes, but I mean, I've I've went through CO two losing their keep star. Uh, oh, that's right, Triumvirate losing their keep star. That was a hard fight, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was probably fifth to sixth, no, probably eighth FC in line during the CO two uh, defense, and they were just you could watch all the people on the watch list FCs down just disappearing, and then it got to me, and I was volleyed off by like I think three hundred max. Wow. All right, we're about to bring on uh, an online camera. This is uh, f actual footage now. So we're looking uh, inside a rage. We have uh, the keep stars that will be attacked in about uh, 15 minutes. Um, it looks like seven minutes. Yep, ticking down seven minutes. It doesn't look like 100 people that are docked and they're going to be able to hold off this uh, this attack so we expect that it will be successful in initiatives favor and it will lead to a dramatic final timer there you go
Somebody is keying up. Let's see. Laser. Oh, that's, sorry, that's me. Let me change that real quick. Yeah, push to talk if you can. Um, Donovan is go. Donovan is back. How are you doing? Doing good. How about y'all? Good. Looks pretty quiet. Yeah, I don't. I don't foresee much of a problem. Yeah, I think the real action was a little while ago, right when we got on. Yeah, I think that pretty much stopped them in their tracks for this. Uh, yeah, it's probably a demoralizing uh, moment because they, at a certain point, they might have had the support of another Nelsec group horde, which would have put. Uh, they are a big group, right? Thousands of people belong in horde. In fact, CO two just merged into horde, so even CO two is in horde. Uh, but yep. they. Goblins just posted a uh, ping today announcing that the looks like five corporations just joined. Yeah, Horde is growing, and these are not just your typical new groups. These are, you know, some solid corporations. I think going in there. Uh, so Horde's um, emerging, and they were going to supply some capsuleers to help defend this place for, with hard knocks. They were not able to get in, and that fleet has since stood down. Uh, goons have not turned this into a full-scale deployment, although fleets are coming from Delve, aren't they? Uh, that is correct. That's Ma uh, Maverick from Goons. That is correct. Hello, Maverick. So it's not a full deployment because it's happening so fast, but you have... How many fleets do you think have uh, come this way? We have six to seven full fleets. Full fleets? Six to seven full oh, fleets yeah. total or... Have come lately. And so. Wow. So we should see this, this. They should see the size of uh, the attackers in a few minutes. If they all log in for this timer, we can see uh, how many people they actually have in there. So, are there any plans, logistics-wise, on how to maximize? Uh, Dragging loot out, or is that something that can be done over time since you will control the place? I think that one falls under OPSEC. <laughs> so you do, you do have plans, but you can't talk about them. My guess would be they'd have a, a citadel. Fords are most likely set up to where they would just move the things there, then move at their will later. That'd be the simplest thing to do, I would think. I think I think a lot of this stuff here is going to be one day at a time till till everything gets resolved. I don't suppose if they reached out, there would be any kind of diplomatic solution. They could. <laughs> arrange some kind of treaty you can send no. you know about seven trillion s to razor clear and we'll stop huh. <laughs> so what is tissues role in this we haven't seen them in a while uh, they're known as uh, hot droppers and um uh mercenaries at one point uh i think they Spent a lot of time on behalf of I Want Isk attacking SMA before uh, the World War B attack of Decline or the Casino War. And it didn't seem like they would really be a natural ally for uh, the Imperium or Initiative. But here they are helping you guys. All right, we're down to two minutes. It doesn't look like there will be any resistance for this timer. There will be a final timer on Monday, and uh, we'll bring that to you live. Uh, I think it is Monday, isn't it, Mr. Matterall? Technically, it's Monday Eve time. Oh, 
Yes, sorry. I meant Wednesday. I meant Wednesday. <laughs> I, I've, thrown, I've thrown around a lot of dates. Not all, all of them were correct lately. By the way, we just had a, a, a podcast this morning, recording session, and we uh, are about to publish that. We'll publish that right after this, uh, probably in about an hour. We had CCP Rise come on and talk to us about Abyssal Space. And I um, just wanted to run this by you guys and feel free to comment to any of you. Um, they have these injectors that are coming with the Christmas event that they're having called Permafrost, I think. If you log in 13 out of like 16 days, you get a booster. The booster allows your character, however many SP they have, to get full advantage of three injectors. That's a hundred and fit sorry, that's one point five million SP that you can put onto your character and bank if you use this booster that they're gonna give out. Pretty good, isn't it? I mean, sounds like it'll get people to log in at least. As long as they don't log in, log in. That's a very aggressive incentive. Um too. That booster is going to be worth a ton of money for people who uh, want to sell it. You know, if you have no need to use it. But I, I'm wondering I, if it's actually going to be sellable. I I I want to say yes. I'm, I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I want to say that it's 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 talked about in those terms because even CCP Rise said it's going to be really. It's going to be a boon for people who. Uh, who get them and sell them. So I think they're going to be for sale. Yeah. Now, I, I, I think there might be a limit to one per character for like a three-year period. So that tells me they might do this kind of a thing every couple of years at Christmas time or something. Switch it up with something else that's lucrative as well. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, the timer is now ticking down, I believe. 14 minutes to go. Uh, we will see. Oh, it looks like uh, people have undocked. Or, yeah, ravens are attacking it. Now. So, the other day I was in crazy traffic, and what do I see? My friend live streaming a makeup tutorial. In Yikes. My, uh, my browser just yelled at me. Some commercial kept going. So, yep, it looks like. Um, okay, now it's paused, so the damage is being applied. All right, so for those of you that have never seen a Keepstar uh, fight, that has 15 minutes. That has 15 minutes to repair. Uh, if it reaches 15 minutes, it actually goes into an invulnerable state and you have to start all over. That would be a, a big, big loss for initiative if they can't kill, if they can't really take the armor plating off this thing before it ticks down to 15 minutes, 14 minutes and 10 seconds now. However, um, it is now paused because if a certain amount of damage is applied to the keep star, that timer is paused and locked until the threshold for damage is not met. So we now have ravens attacking it, and they are able to damage it enough. You'll see the armor start to become damaged to the point where it's completely destroyed, and it will enter at that point into its final phase of life. What's interesting right now is it doesn't look like they're putting up any defense. They aren't gonna they aren't really undocking any kind of massive fleet. To, to fight this at all. It's just looking like they're, they're trying to use the Keep Stars defenses to kill off as many Ravens as they can. Yeah, that Keep Star will be fighting back. Uh, we have images of earlier in the, on the first phase of this, the Keep Star was fighting the uh, Ravens. Uh, to some success, it killed seven, I think. Let's see if I can grab a picture of that. And this was something that happened earlier. It's just not happening now. That was earlier. You can see it's uh, the Keepstar is firing its doomsday at a Raven fleet and destroying it. That was from yesterday morning, uh, about uh, 
a day and six hours ago. It successfully killed at least seven ravens uh, when it did that. Now, initiative, in order to defend against that, they don't want to lose ravens. Those are their DPS ships, so they stick high mast executors, which are cruisers. They plate them up uh, and make them really, really mass concentrated. So the electricity will go to that ship, which is much cheaper and not as useful here, instead of knocking out one of their ravens. Uh, so that was earlier today. We'll go back to looking at the Keepstar Live. And that kind of a tactic is something that is, uh, it's really amazing. The EVE players, the way they learn to work with mechanics and, and optimize their strategies, uh, the tactics in EVE are incredibly deep. That's one of the attracting, attractive things about the game. It attracts players that like Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike you play with, what, 32 or 8, 32, 64? I don't know how many people you play with Counter-Strike. They have all kinds of tactics coordinated moves, um, ways of using weapons. All that stuff is very interesting. And in EVE Online, you multiply that times 100. Uh, you have, actually, you multiply that times thousands. You have thousands of players. You have incredibly deep tactics. The initiative itself was a group that formed the, uh, what are called bush fleets. And... Uh, you know, those are using the uh, tools that using command destroyers to as as assistance to a larger fleet like Ravens and moving it around in uh, unnaturally fast ways, uh, stuff like that. So really exciting. So what we're seeing now is the timer is paused at 14 minutes and it is uh, being attacked by a Raven fleet, which is usually a heavy missile fleet. From the looks of it, uh, hard like knocks one. are not going to resist this uh, this stage of the fight. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, the first Keepstar Doomsday that went off looked like it only killed about one raven. It was interesting. I don't know how it could only kill one. Were the other ones out of range? I'm not sure. I saw the Doomsday go off, but I didn't. I didn't see but one wreck, and now that wreck is gone as well. From what the bar Brisk probably explained. clear wrecks off. Sorry. Yeah. From what Brisk explained, it killed one raven and a bunch of the doomsday sponges. Which are basically designed to take that hit. Because what you're seeing on screen, if you see the uh, bomb icons flying around, well, when the initiative booshes, those bombs will just keep continually trying to follow that fleet around. So that's what those uh, small little brackets are following the raven fleet around. Yeah, it looks like there's probably five or six of them following the Raven fleet around. In reference to that DD, it looks like it. They DD to Raven, so the Raven dies, and then the bounces to the highest mass ship, so it aren't Ravens anymore. It's a zigzag. It's a smart tactic uh, using the mass differences there to make sure they don't lose uh, very many ravens to something like that. Basically, this whole thing relies on those uh, those uh, command destroyers and booshing properly. But Initiative has been doing this for a very long time, so that's not an issue with them. But losing those... Uh, Boosters would be the uh, the focal point if you were to fight something like this and try to uh, get control of that fleet would be to kill those boosters. But yeah, looking at I don't suspect there's going to be a fight at all here. I imagine they're just going to try to gather allies and wait for that final timer and see if they can uh, make something happen. You'd think that they would have taken this time to maybe find some way to counter this this fleet, or uh, maybe even 
figure out a way to test a a, a counter to this and, and use the armor timer for that instead of just just punting the fight, the, the armor timer. Well, they tried and they got blown up. So yeah, that's true. I think I think they lost their ability to respond during this armor timer when that uh that initial hole control fleet coming this... in got waxed. I was actually in a bomber and died in my bomber when that the fleet got killed. It was quite funny watching a whole fleet of Serbs and Munins warp to a bubble at bombers at 30 and just whoosh, there they went. I think they lost a total of about 60 Munins and Serbs and then about, I think we counted 50 pods on the kill. All right, we're able to bring you the uh, identity bubbles of the people who are talking now. I'll try to keep that up. Yeah, that's something with the the Stuker, Goku fleet, however you want to call it. Um, you, you you can't just tank one thing of bombers. You're going to be tanking the entire fleet's bombs periodically throughout your your brawl. It's a bad play by them for the warp in and whatnot. But that that's a, that's a tough nut to crack if uh, they have any support with those Gokus as well. All right, I think we've overcome, through the help of friends, some hurdles. We've got a visual, real-time, on uh, Fort Knox. It's being destroyed at this point, at least the armor phase of this being destroyed. There will be a final phase happening Wednesday if this is successful today. The timer actually slipped a little bit. It's now at 13 minutes and 16 seconds. Yeah, you'll see it kick up every once in a while uh, when they boosh and they then reapply damage due to the missile travel time. So they're applying damage, they reposition, and then continue to apply damage. So it will slip continuously uh, while they reposition. If they don't do that, they could get destroyed by what weaponry are they in fear of? Uh, it looked like a minute ago that there were just so many Citadel bombs that had piled up behind them that they needed to get out before those got super close to them. Um, because if all of those go off at one time, that would that would be pretty devastating, I think. So that's probably why they had to re Yeah, that's the, the, the one thing. The Doomsday and the bombs are going to be your, your, your ship killer for this kind of thing. There's too much uh, there to uh, you can't launch fighters from the keep starting to do anything with those to, for it to be worth anything. Yeah, they're too long range to be able to to be able to go out that far with the fighters. It would just they would just kill them. Yeah, in order for them to stop this, you've got to get on top of that Raven fleet and keep them from moving around. Which in and of itself is nearly impossible with all the command destroyers and the the micro jump drives on the. Yeah, it's not impossible with all the support there. Uh, even if you get on top of the Ravens, there's enough there to clear off whatever you get on top of them. All right, thanks for tuning in. If you're just joining us, uh, we we've crested 500 people watching uh, this morning or yesterday morning. It's all one blur now. It was 400 people, so we have a bit more. You're just joining us. You're seeing the armor timer for the Fort Knox Keepstar. Those uh, blue dots there are ravens from the initiative and friends. They have snuff in there with them and tissue as well. And they are bombing this Keepstar uh, through its armor. And once the armor timer is destroyed, uh, it will go into its final reinforcement timer, and that will be for the hull. And it will be destroyed after that. This is wormhole space. Everything inside there is going to be destroyed or purged uh, as a loot drop for people who destroyed it. The stakes couldn't be higher. Uh, and in wormhole space, it's very important that you do not die. It's very difficult to reship. And especially if you're potted, uh, you are then ejected from here. Your clone is information to your clone is sent back into empire space and you have to find your way back into this wormhole that's okay if you control the gates it's not okay if you don't so hole control is a big big part of this whole engagement it's essentially a three-day fight um, because you have to be vigilant you have to set up watches uh, you, you cannot um, go away and come back later that's not how fights work in wormhole space
Yep, you'll have 24-hour operations of folks going and looking and finding holes and either collapsing them or picketing them so folks can't get in. Yeah, let me be uh, clear. Just... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that was a... I want to be clear about something. Uh, we have... It, it's difficult to get um, camera from inside of there, so this is not my camera. Uh, and if it has blues and reds and grays, those are not my picks for colors. And it has nothing to do with... Uh, with talking in stations. We don't have any allies or anything like that. We're looking at a picture that someone has provided us with, and we're thankful for that. Yep, uh, you're looking at the blue, of course, is the initiative ravens, and the neutrals look to be mostly the laser hawk groups. Uh, unfortunately, if he hasn't hovered over any of the names there, so we can't really tell, but that's what is to be assumed, at least for the neutrals on the Q-Star. Yeah, can somebody give me a stat on where the armor is at? I don't know if I can see it. Looks like it's about sixty percent right now, maybe okay. fifty-five. It's okay. getting close. I'll update the screen. Now, one thing we aren't too aware of, although somebody might have commented on earlier, um, does anybody know what the actual fitting on these keep stars is? Well, we know they have a doomsday, and we've seen that it's launched uh, missiles as well, right? And it has had its PDS on in the past, so we do know that it has one. So you know a few of the high slots with that. I'm more curious about the low slots. You would have to because be able to... If you're going to name something Fort Knox, then by God, it better have a lot of uh, armor. My, <laughs> it better have my, plates in the low slots. My willing to guess right now is that it probably has all T2 rigs on it as well. Uh, T2, T2, and then T1. I don't think you can do three T2s, but yeah, yeah. you're probably right. Yeah. I'd expect the uh, the XL extermination on there. Give that doomsday that bit more uh, uh, poke. Well, in this current situation, fighting a Raven fleet and really there doesn't really matter what the fitting of the Keep Star is at this point. The, the PDS is nice, but oh, really, see. that's to deal with other things. Yeah, Thanatos there. Are... there? There is a Thanatos that keeps undocking, it seems like. This now a Thanatos is not just a Thanatos. In Wormhole Space, that is equivalent to your super capital. It is the biggest kind of ship that you can have. Dreads and carriers are the biggest type in Wormhole Space. Let's reemphasize that. So Thanatos and other carriers like it are likely to have uh, very, very expensive modules on it. They're, they're big force multipliers and wormhole, especially another thing that they're used for is, is quick hole rolling. Uh, you put two caps through a wormhole and the third one will collapse it. So that could be used for a quick rolling of a hole. Yeah, there are all kinds of utilities. Um, for those guys, if they had enough of them, they could mount a fight. Usually these fights, when you have an eviction fight, and I guess you could consider this an eviction fight, it's definitely a seek and destroy fight. But when you have a situation like this uh, in wormholes, you see capitals used and you see dreadnoughts used quite a bit. But normally you have even teams or close to even teams. And here there's a huge disparity between... Um, uh, the uh, the amount of people that are in there for initiative and the amount of people who are in there for HK. Edic, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you have... um, matter of... Sorry. Go ahead, Bard Ghost. It's been said that it's now at 50% armor, so right. it's ticking down pretty quick as there's also no tie iron system to what's being said. Oh, that's an that's interesting correct. thing. The, the tie dye, how it's not affecting this fight... Well, there is no tie dye. It's it's there. There's no tie dye in the system at all. It's all been reinforced for the last two days, so there hasn't been any. And there's not really any large, like I said yesterday or the day before. There's not really any large player on player battles going on. It's really just one sided versus this keep star. So there's not really a two sided fight going on here. So there's not really that big of a reason for there to be much. Tie -dye. Yeah, with, with the numbers that are here, it's not that big a deal. Uh, usually when you start seeing a lot of tight as when you start getting the fighters launched, like if, say, uh, Hard Knocks were going to dock a bunch of carriers and launch fighters, that you would see an immediate stack up of at least initially of tight die. Well, and it should be said, we were told, 
Don't know if it was confirmed by CCP Rise, and I haven't confirmed it with Falcon either if the node has been reinforced. It certainly doesn't look like it's in any danger of even hitting tie-dye, much less having massive disconnects and stuff like that. So this is going to be a fight in real time, uh, which, is, which is great for announcing it because we can bring all this to you without it lasting six hours. Usually when we do nullsec fights, uh, I did UALX, I did 9TAC4. Those fights took six and eight hours respectively. So it's, uh, it's nice to see a, a fight actually happen in real time. It's uh, a lot easier on the commentators. Yeah, and if you look right now, it looks like there's a, you know, a good handful of bombs right there getting really close to the Raven fleet again. I'm not sure. Yep, see, they just those bombs just keep getting closer and closer to that Raven fleet, and that but, seems to be the only danger to them right now. The bombs are the circles. I'll see if I can actually highlight them uh, for you. Uh, somebody met, looked at one of them earlier. They looked like light bombs, not uh, heavy. So those shouldn't hurt those that much. Yeah, those are light guided bombs. Those should tickle at, at best. Oh, interesting. Anything that's uh, a destroyer, maybe a cruiser, and certainly a frigate's going to have a bad day if they get touched by them, which well, they're well, keeping those executors nearby, so that could be part of that. Yeah, that, that may be the reason why they're using them. I uh, can't know for sure, but that would be my guess, is they're trying to clear off those execs so they have less of a uh, sponge. Uh, I linked in the links uh, portion of Discord with the uh, executor fit they're using as a sponge. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, if you look at it, they've got the Higgs anchor rig on there, so that's what's giving it this extra mass so that uh, DD tracks to those executors instead of the Ravens. Um, if they're using the bombs to help clear off the executors, then that makes that DD more effective in hitting the Ravens if they if they run out of them. Okay, well, I'm okay, sure they're keeping those ABs on. That's 100 M and AB. Yeah, we finally have some numbers coming through. Uh, interesting to see. That... I'll have to try to figure out how this breaks down, but we have 172 Ravens. 158 cerebuses. Those are armor. Um, no, those are shield hacks. And um, those are heavy, basically, assault cruisers. You have a lot of bombers in there. You have about 80 uh, bombers. And uh, I think uh, Goon Swarm brought an Ishtar fleet. You have about 50 of those. Uh, they probably also have a jacked off fleet, which is about 40 of those. So those are the major numbers mostly in here you're going to have agile ships for fighting and those are going to be the hacks heavy assault cruisers um, but here you have some battleships and stealth bombers stealth bombers are able to deploy torpedoes which do a good amount of damage for structures since the structures aren't moving they get all the splash damage but if you throw a, a missile at a ship that's nimble and quick and small all the blast doesn't affect it so it's mitigated but for structures, they have no mitigation. Yeah, someone brought up a good point that those light structure bombs would also be affecting the uh, boosters as well, since yeah. you know the destroyers and whatnot. But uh, the execs being there to tank the DDs as well, and as act as logi, that it's, it's not going to do much. Even with all the bombs landing, I don't think it may be scary, but I don't think it'll it'll be the end all be all of it. The execs are the weakest part of that whole uh, that whole equation. Yeah, and every pilot counts in these situations, but you definitely need that damage, and the Ravens are the damage, and they are not going to be affected by those smaller bombs. You will have the utility ships that uh, might get hurt, but who knows. As long as those Ravens are pounding that keep star, that armor will be eventually destroyed, and we'll go into the last timer. It's now paused again, under 13 minutes. They have plenty of time to do this. All right, guys, i got to go again. All right, thanks. Sorry, I'm back. Okay. Ugh. You see how that works. There you go, it's fixed now. Yeah, I was getting a 
I've been texted all day and I forgot that my camera, because I had to do a workaround, will, oops, switch out. Oh, we can hear some sound. Um, thanks for telling me that. All right, looks like this is gonna go uncontested. It's not surprising, you really have to pick your fights, so. I'm not sure it's a good idea for them to try to win something they can't. Curious question here for the rest of you, but this thing doesn't feel like it's uh, has the extra armor plates and the the lows. It feels like it's going. We're going through the armor pretty quick. Um, I haven't really been timing this. I'm not sure how long the timer has been out for, but usually at damage cap, it takes what twenty minutes to to go through a timer. I think it was twenty four for a keep star. Yeah. For us, uh, wow, Citadel in general. Really the same. Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant it's uh, Citadels in general are all 24, if I remember yeah. right. This feels like it's not plated, but they're not reaching damage cap. I would expect that. The damage cap on this thing is going to be, what is it, 150,000? Yeah, they're not hitting damage cap with those Ravens. There's not enough of them. Oh, Doomsday just went off again. I think the damage caps are around 150,000 DPS. I, I don't think the Ravens are going to do that. Those might be kicking out 500 each, maybe 600. It looks like there's also some Tengus hanging out at the top of the Keepstar there. It, from the angle, it looked like there was Tengus possibly being there as well. And that would be a uh, a way to help try to mitigate some of that as well, would be to bring in Slippery Peace and try to pick off Command Destroyers. Uh, what do we have the armor at? Looks like it's nah. maybe about 20% right now. Maybe like 20, 25. Yeah, last we heard it was 33, and that was... Must be about 8 minutes ago now. The timer is starting to tick down a little more while they reboot. I wouldn't expect this to take more than about 10 minutes, though. Unless there's a big fleet that comes out and engages. Yes. Well, there's just... only 85 people in the Keepstar right now, even, so 82 and it's dropping. Well, could Hacks take on uh, Ravens? Definitely. And certainly, oh, yeah. as, again, you, you just, as it boils down again to pinning down the Ravens and applying. Uh, that's basically the end-all be-all of it, and then it depends on also what other support uh, initiative has in there as well. You know, you got to take that into effect. It, whatever they undock, they're going to not only have to deal with the Ravens, but whatever else other support fleets are there as well. Hence, probably why they're just not inclined to try to engage anything right now. Um, so Brisk has just confirmed for us it's now 22% armor. Okay. Um, and someone brings up an interesting one in stream chat uh, with regards to the rigs. He believes he counted nine pods warp off, which would indicate that they may have the tech to doomsday. Rig. Uh, someone had mentioned something about slippery peats. Slippery peats are basically uh, long range tengus. You'll run sensor boosters and uh, uh, tracking computers in the mid slots to either reduce your signature and not be scanned or uh, to increase your targeting range for them. And you apply out to around 200 kilometers with them. So it looks like the, the PDS is on for the Keepstar now. Um, That's a point defense why. system? There's not really anything super close to it, it seems like, that would, that would benefit from turning that on. Are there any drones or anything? I guess not. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just just in case, uh, you would only not run that to save capacitor, I imagine. I don't know if that's necessary here. No, it's not necessary. They're not. They they, they won't be running down the cap on that keep star at all with the current engagement through him. Your biggest your biggest cap usage is your 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 scram paints and whatnot for missiles on those things. Along with the PDA. and the doomsday, of course. Oh. But, uh, they can run the Doomsday five or six times before that thing runs out of cap. 
Ron uh, from USMC says the benefit of a PDS uh, is anti-bomber protection for the undock. Well, I mean, even the undock, really, the guys that are there, if they're tethered, they aren't going to be able to be bombed anyways, so that doesn't really... And even if they were to untether, they would be hit themselves by the PDS. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. That thing hits friend or foe in a radius around the keep star. It's pretty vicious for small ships. So one yeah, thing yeah. they could be thinking about is, uh, if possible, the PDS could do damage to the. Uh, I'm guessing they're either using cruise. Well, they're probably using cruise missiles on. Mm -hmm. The cruise missiles might be able to take damage and uh, not hit the keep star. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to ask. Is it possible if that was a uh... Like firewalling. Yeah, firewall. I don't I don't think you could do it or time it right for that. Uh, especially with the missile HP buff. I don't uh, it may be able to kill off someone, but it, it wouldn't be a viable tactic. All right. We're gonna get unless, a, go ahead and finish your statement. Unless you had every uh high slot in the keep star being a PDS, and I think you can you can only do All right. Or can you do multiple? We're uh, now joined by Sister Bliss. How are you doing? Hey Metal. Hey, thanks for coming on. Um, where are we at with this? And uh, first, I should say, Sister Bliss, for those that don't know, is the leader of Initiative. Uh, he is also an FC in there, um, tearing down the armor on this keep star. How's it going? Yeah, it's going pretty good. It's pretty chilled at the moment. Uh, the dudes are just uh, uh, almost finishing off the second ref, so it's all pretty relaxing. What happened earlier? Uh, it was a pretty, pretty frantic afternoon with um, people trying to rage hull and rage roll holes and get in. And uh, we just intercepted, I think, a fleet that wasn't on its way in and um, had a bit of a skirmish and, yeah, killed some stuff. It was good. <laughs> I heard that it took, uh, it, it took some bombing expertise to, to prevent that hole from being opened. Um, was it a close one or what happened there? Yeah, it was pretty close. I, I don't really. I was. Um, I think uh, I don't really know what whose whose fleet it was. I think it looked like a combined laser hawks and. To be honest, I don't really know who these dudes are. Combined laser hawks and um, yeah, looks like Knox moving in safely. Yeah, came in to uh, take control of the hole, and uh, I think we heard there was another fleet on the way, so um, we had to quickly scramble and go in for a bit of engagement. Yeah, we just took in some Stukas and some Ravens, and yeah, got got some lucky bomb runs off. Yeah. So you actually stopped it, prevented them from coming in. How many? How many do you think you killed there, of the enemies? Uh, I think uh, I can't remember now. I think it's about thirty-seven bill kills. About I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not sure actually. You have to... Yeah, well, we can look it up for uh, later. But that was really the uh, important for them, right? They needed to get more people in here to help defend this thing at this point. Yeah, we aren't. I mean, we aren't really that familiar with the mechanics, but. Um... I guess you know, all this rage rolling and getting people through the chains and stuff, it takes tons of effort. So, uh, yeah, we were quite lucky to stop that. From so you're someone I can ask that might be able to say, but what, uh, what went into the planning of this thing? Uh, we, we'll probably do, to be honest with you, I, I take no credit whatsoever for, uh, for the planning. Of it. It's basically a bunch of guys who um, most people probably wouldn't have Actually, it's not quite fair, actually. So probably some of them would be, uh, some people would be familiar with, but a lot of the guys who uh, did all the prep and the planning are um, relatively low key. And uh, we'll do a, probably a big expose towards the end. And, you know, no matter what the outcome is, we'll probably do a big write up and just show all the, one, all the work those people did. And it's probably going to be quite an exciting, well, interesting read for everybody, actually. Um, but now yeah, there's been people putting a ton of effort in. It started off as a bit of a, a solo or a small group project, and then it, it kind of grew uh, grew a life, and um, yeah, we grabbed hold of it and tried to make it happen. Well, I have a feeling it'll be talked about for a few weeks and maybe longer. Uh, this was something that was unimaginable a while ago, uh, but since we've seen the destruction of keep stars with some capital ships more and more often, uh, wh I just wonder what made Hard Knocks a target in the first place. You haven't had no past with them, have you? Uh, personally, no. I mean, uh, I mean, you can probably you probably manufacture a narrative if you want to, but I don't think we have we've even got any real big beef with them. Uh, I think there's probably a handful of people who probably have a history of them from wormhole days gone by, but 
I think it's probably just the combination of the challenge from mm -hmm. you know, the people who instigated the whole thing. It was just more of a, uh, for them, I think probably more of a challenge than anything else, you know, set an, set an impossible task and see if they can do it. All right, so the keep star has entered reinforce mode. All right. So it's, it's now in low power. Oh, it's in low power. Um... All the service modules turn off when it goes into its final reinforce. This has a it lot says of... says one day, 23 hours. Yeah, it does. That means it will be Wednesday, Wednesday morning eve time. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday night, night, Wednesday morning. Yeah, that was beautifully timed on their part. All right, they achieved uh, Fort Knox is in its final timer. It's just begun it. This is going to be, well, something that we'll talk about a long, long time if this keep star goes down. It's the first keep star ever built in EVE Online, built just a few days after they were even in the, uh, the blueprints hit the uh, game. And uh, here it is in, in real trouble. Right, thanks, Dave, but man, roll. I'm uh, I'm off to bed. Take yeah, it easy, mate. I bet you. Uh, I bet you need some rest. Night. Thanks, Sister Bliss. So another thing to note that now that the service modules and everything are offline, any of the clones that they have, they can't switch. Uh, so whatever they're in, they're stuck in. Right. They're limited in their flexibility now because uh, what one of the cool things about Keepstars is that you can actually have like. Uh, multiple jump clones, multiple clones that you get into that have different implants. It gives you a lot of flexibility in your system. Uh, that is now all cut off from them. So whatever they're in. Well, at least for this keep star. So if they had another clone in one of the others, the other keep star or the other structures in here, they could still utilize. It's a very good point. Um, right. And I imagine if they're, if they've been, planning for this sort of invasion and maybe they have because every wormhole group really sets up their defense plan uh, for an eviction uh, they might have had redundancies like that where you have a, a clone with certain plugins and different uh, keep stars in this case they're probably in their best clothes anyway or their best clone uh, I would imagine they've been fighting this uh, with everything they've got uh, at least getting in and prepared with everything they've got right off the bat. The second key star is, do we know where that, the... Uh, it is still full. Uh, it has not been reinforced. Yeah, its timer must be pretty close though, right? I think it's, uh, what's it? Ti its timer at? Um, well, uh, I I'm not sure if it's been scanned or hacked yet, but I would assume that they would have at least put it on a different day, uh, if not, you know, all separate days for all of their structures in case of an attack like but there is no timer on it right now because it's not reinforced um, but is there oh you can't see when its timer comes out no there's not there's not a vulner like there's not a vulnerability window and it hasn't been through its first reinforcement so there isn't a timer let me see if i understand that i thought that its shield was reinforced it wasn't Mm -mm. No, the the second keep star hasn't been touched. What? That's crazy. I didn't know that. I thought yesterday someone told me that this it, it had been reinforced at the same time. Mm -mm. Still untouched. Well, wait a minute. That's no. Why would you do that? You wouldn't want one to slip through. I figure you take care of them one after another. Well, it's an interesting uh, tactic. I mean, it could go both ways. You know, if you kill the first one and you know, wait for the second one to after that one's done, then that would be uh, less time for, I mean, less chance for them to practice on more battles, I guess, to try and counter, you know, whatever you have in the wormhole, less opportunity for them to, to get rid of anything that you have to be able to kill any of your pilots and get your pods out. Yeah. Oh. Also note, if they were timed for the same time and they both came out at the same time on their final time as you could end up losing one timer while fighting the other. Indeed. So I'm just taking that one off because we know that's not true anymore. There's also that was fun. A, there's hey, also a Satio up there on the same grid. Hi, Britt. Hi, guys. That was so, fun. 
Okay, reinforced. Uh, it's got a final timer. We'll put up the put up the time. Do we know what the time and place is now? Oh, one forty-seven Wednesday. Okay. Glad I have Wednesday off. <laughs> How'd it go, Brisk? It went well. I mean, it went basically the way I think we were expecting it to. Um, I was hoping we were going to get a fight, uh, but it, it looks like um, they're going to save their powder for Wednesday, which is fine. I mean, we expected that too. I, mean, they kinda I was get... hoping after earlier we were going to fight more, but uh, I, was say, I think they, they got kind of got their, their only hurrah in earlier when they were trying to regain whole control and, and lost it, uh, lost more than they even barked. And I think that, you know, there were other fleets that were on the way. Um, you know, Horde had a fleet that was coming that way. And, and, and when we were able to take that back, I think it kind of knocked them for a loop. And then uh, Goons came in and they're giving us a breather right now, uh, controlling the hole while our guys are, are shifting down for a little bit because we've been going all day today, which is nice. So thank you, Goons, for helping. I've been told I have not been nice enough and given goons enough credit for what they're doing to help us on so yeah from the sure d scan that. from the d scans it looks like they had a another whole cerberus fleet in the hole that we didn't see on grid at all so yeah i i think they've got probably you know two or three hundred characters in 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 the hole right now between them and, and some of the groups uh probably way more than that and i'm probably you know talking out of my ass when i say that number um, but I think Wednesday's going to be fun. We're looking for the, we're looking forward to a good fight. Yeah. So do you guys have reinforcements coming in other than who's already in there? Is this going to be have reinforcement shooting? fleets coming in continuously? Um, yeah, we've been bringing people in all day as much, you know, we've had, you know, we've got a big we've got a big alliance. We got a lot of guys coming in. Unfortunately, you know, not everybody can be on all the time. So, we've had reinforcement fleets that have been running from Fountain in, you know, one every couple hours all day. Goons came to help. I know uh, they had Asher and, and the guys were in uh, came in and they're they're right now doing whole control. And I think we've got they had a pretty sizable fleet, uh, probably a full fleet um, that came in with them. So, and we're trying to get as many friends as we can to help. Just like HK is trying to do the same thing. Yeah. I think I even saw some um, snuffed out and stuff earlier in the hole as well in, in a Tingu. That's true. We had snuffed with us. We had tissue with us. Uh, that was a very interesting experience, having tissue and fleet with us. We're used to shooting at them, not with them. That was kind of fun. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Uh... Well, you know, these opportunities to get a rare kill is makes for strange bedfellows. Uh, I think you saw even mortal enemies snuff and Shadow Cartel come together to uh, work towards the demise of the, the Imperium when it was up north. I think these things tend to have a, a, a spitball effect. You know, everybody wants to get a, a piece of the action when it's something... Dunk's trying to get in, right? Dunk, you, you coming? You may be here. You might have walked away. It's been a couple hours. We need to talk to HK to see, you know, how things are going from their side. And let me tell you why that's hard. Because one is, there's probably not a lot of good news. Two is, what can you say? Uh, this is a, a do or die kind of thing. And three, they're probably pretty busy. Uh, doesn't mean we're not trying to get them to be on the show or to talk to you guys about what's going on from their point of view. Uh, normally, as you've seen, when you're, when it's looking good for your team and your, your site is doing pretty well, it's a good time to talk about it. If your team's not doing that well, it, you know, it takes, it takes a bit more to show up and talk about it and only key people can talk for, for hard knocks. Otherwise they get in trouble. Yeah, I know a few people that are uh, associated with the group from old old friends and Eve, but um, I haven't really heard much from them. You know, it's been kind of a dark few days for them, it seems like. Yeah. I know that other um, 
worm holders are not real happy about this. So they see this as an amazing, uh, as an incredible intrusion into their play style and their stuff. So they're getting some stuff. They're getting, they're getting pretty angry about this. I want to say disseminator inside of chat saying that uh, HK is telling people to pot out because they're out of ships to hand out. That seems very unlikely. I don't know where you heard that. It may be true, but I find that unlikely considering this is their home where they would have an incredible amount of assets. I would also be surprised if they're telling folks to pot out because uh, it's very hard for them to get back in. Yeah, I so think that's, that's a bit of a troll. A idea. I apologize if I'm wrong, but I think that's a bit of a troll. It goes completely against logic. Oh, yeah, Brisk, this is a question from Modus Vis. Why didn't you guys reinforce the other Keepstar, the one called Unassailable Wealth? To be bluntly honest, I do not know. What I am, what I speculate, and this is literally me speaking as line member Brisk who presses F1. Um, we have two days until we have to keep the, we have to go for the, the final timer on Fort Knox until Wednesday. It seems to me that having something to do every day to get folks motivated to log in, I would think we would probably ref the other keep start tomorrow mm -hmm. as something to do on Monday and then have an armor timer on Tuesday uh potentially uh, and that way we have fleets uh, stuff to do every night that's what i would do at least if i were in charge of everything i don't know what we're what we're thinking so i'd have to find out from them what's going on with that but you know in this situation because of how well the fc team has done everybody's kind of just following orders and not really asking questions so we'll find out um <laughs> hopefully in a couple of days uh, if that if that's the strategy, but if not, uh, I don't know. I can't answer that question. Yep. But I have asked it. <laughs> you have All right. Well, let's just clean up now. Uh, initiative looks like it took the timer on the first Keepstar ever made, Fort Knox. It will go into final timer, which we will see on Wednesday at uh, 2 a.m. UTC, which is real nice time for U.S. time zone. That's 8 Eastern time, 5 Pacific time. That will be the final timer for this Keepstar. Initiative's got the upper hand. Uh, Goon Swarm is now, or Goon Swarm of the Imperium and their allies are now uh, going to set up night watches up until that point to make sure that they control all the entrances to this system and to choke off reinforcements for Hard Knocks. And uh, that's all the coverage that we're going to have tonight. We'll be back to do live coverage for the final timer. Look for a podcast just recorded earlier this morning. I'll wrap up this segment here, this live coverage for an hour and a half, and put that out as well. All this on TalkingInStations.com. You can subscribe to the podcast of the same name, Talking In Stations. I want to thank you guys for showing up. Uh, Brisk, Sister Bliss that's not here anymore, Donovan, and uh, all the guys in this channel. You guys uh, really help fill in the blanks. And I also want to say thank you very much to everybody in chat for giving us information and for informing each other on what's going on in there. Um, and I want to thank the person, I'll keep him anonymous, that uh, put up the uh, video for us. It really helped uh, to see what the uh, ravens were doing as they were jumping around avoiding the bombs and stuff. Thank you, guys. We will see you next time on Wednesday. We'll be talking in stations.